bless you, St. Paul family. Welcome to the weekly worship experience from the St. Paul Church in Oxon Hill. You are starting your week off right. You're starting your week off right because you're starting your week in praise. You're starting your week in worship, and you're starting your week with the Word of God. This is going to be an awesome service that's going to get you set for the week ahead, but it's going to get you right today. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you because you've come by here today. We thank you because you've sent us a word. You've sent us the ability to praise and to worship. But Lord, we know we're going to hear from you. But Lord, we thank you because you got us through this week. You brought us over many dangers, toils, and snares. And Lord, we're putting you first this week. We're honoring you this week with the first of our time, the first of our substance, and the first of our attention. So Lord, we ask you, bless this service and bless us as we join in. Get us ready to praise. Get us ready to worship. But open us up to hear from you in Jesus' name name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Ready, set, go. So glad you made it. Welcome to this place. Where I will believe in and my own teaching community of faith.
more chains, no more bondage, I am free. Yeah. Come on, let's sing it again. No more, no more, no shackles, more, no more chains, no more, no more bondage, I am free. Yeah. I like this next part. Let's give God the highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 Congratulations. This week, our own Tamika Robinson, formerly Tamika Taylor, graduated with her master's degree from Southern New Hampshire University. She now has a master's in communications. We're so proud of you, Tamika. As a matter of fact, this is a picture of her right here with the president of Southern New Hampshire University. You all know the president. He's the guy from the commercials, and he congratulated Tamika personally. Tamika, we're so proud of you. As you all know, we've been living in a season of greater than for months, and Tamika is stepping into her greater than like so many of us are. Way to go, Tamika. We're so, so proud of you. Want to remind you all, as always, we'll be in Pastor's Bible Study this Wednesday at 7 p.m. I want you to join me as we continue our study of the kingdom of God. All you've got to do is join us on any one of our St. Paul channels at 7 p.m. for Pastor's Bible Study. As a matter of fact, I may have something a little special for you this week. You want to make sure that you tune in. Let you know this. Our new devotional starts on Monday. You know we believe in reading scripture and studying it together. Our new devotional is simply called Blessed, and I want you to be a part of it. To join our devotional, just check your e-blast or go to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org, and simply press the Ministries tab and click on Current Devotional, and it'll sign you right up for our new devotional, simply called Blessed. Our prayer call continues at 7.30 a.m. Monday through Friday. We want you to be a part of it. To be on our prayer call, all you got to do is dial in at 605-313-5874 and use access code 390-060. There's no better way to start your day than in prayer and praise with the people of the St. Paul Church. As you all know, we continue in ministry to make sure we're alleviating hunger in our community. So if you or someone you know needs food, all you got to do is come to one of our food distributions. On Thursdays, we give out food through the St. Paul Food Pantry. To get, a, to get a distribution from the St. Paul Food Pantry, just call us at the number below to set up an appointment so we can be ready for you to distribute in a socially distanced manner, and we'll be ready for you on Thursdays with a distribution. Also, on Fridays, through our partnership with Trader Joe's, we give out fresh fruit, fresh fruit, vegetables, and produce on the St. Paul campus starting at 3 p.m. You don't even need an appointment. All you got to do is show up. It's first come, first serve, but we want you to be blessed or somebody that you know. Make sure they're being blessed in this season. Speaking of being blessed in this season, St. Paul, you know that during the Christmas and Thanksgiving season, we ramp up our generosity. This year, as always, we are having a Thanksgiving basket drive. The Thanksgiving baskets this year are $65. And we're asking you, if you can, to support that drive by either donating a basket, part of a basket, or multiple baskets. But we need your help because we want to feed 100 families in our community during Thanksgiving. If you want to give to the Thanksgiving basket drive, you can do it through all of our normal channels. You can do it on Givelify, you can do it on the St. Paul website, or you can mail a, church, a check to the church. Listen, St. Paul, we know that we are a generous people. And we're a generous people because we serve a generous God. And this is what we know. God's abundance is there for us. But God's abundance also allows us to give abundantly to others. We're blessed to be a blessing. So right now, let's get our hearts and minds together as we prepare for our morning offering. 
there are multiple ways that you can give to the St. Paul Church. You can give by clicking on the link on the screen in front of you. You can also give by going to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org and pressing the Give tab. If you want to give by using your cell phone, you can give through the Givelify app. Just search for St. Paul Church in Oxen Hill and you'll find a picture of me and a picture of the church so you know you're giving to the right place and you can give safely and securely there. Last but not least, you can always mail your tithes and offerings to the St. Paul Church. You can mail them to 6634 St. Barnabas Road, Oxen Hill, Maryland, 20745, Attention Finance Ministry. As you give, remember what the word tells us. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your hearts to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, let's give abundantly unto the Lord. Come on, this first month of 2021, I'm just grateful to God for making ways out of what seemed like absolutely no way and he does this time after time after time again. And he won't ever stop making a way. Thank you, Lord. Say mm -hmm. you, you made a way. When our backs were against the wall.
this week, we're continuing the series of sermons that we started preaching and teaching from last week under the general rubric of kingdom economics. I hope last week's sermon blessed you, but I want you to know throughout this entire month, we're doing a kingdom economics takeover on all of our social media platforms. So make sure you're following us on Facebook and that you're following us on Instagram because we're putting out daily tips to help you with your finances and your relationship to money so that you're doing it in a kingdom way. Listen, this week we're going to pick up on the Kingdom Economics series. Last week we talked about scarcity and knowing that we serve a God of abundance. This week I want to talk about another law of economics called the law of supply and demand. As a matter of fact, this week's sermon is called Supply and Demand. In the world, supply and demand is a pricing mechanism for products, goods, and services. The law of supply and demand is a theory that explains the interaction between the sellers of a resource and the buyers of that resource. The theory defines the relationship between the price of a given good or product and the willingness of people to either buy it or sell it. Generally speaking, as prices increase, people are willing to supply more and demand less and vice versa when a price falls. The more readily available something is, the less you can generally charge for it. The more scarce something is, the more you can generally charge for it. In the world, supply and demand is about how you use your resources and how, re and how things are priced to get your resources. But as I told you last week, the kingdom is different and kingdom economics are different. The law of supply and demand in the kingdom is radically different than the economic theory of supply and demand. Let me break it down for you. In the kingdom, supply and demand is not about how you use your resources, but supply and demand is about how you use God's resources. you got to remember, we talked about it last week. We serve a God of abundance, a God that has enough at all times. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 simply tells us that our God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory, which means that God has enough so we don't have to haggle price with God. But here's the thing. God's supply and God's demand work differently because God is overwhelmingly willing to bless us with supply. But he puts a demand on the supply that he gives us. Let me show you. 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 9 verses 10 and 11 simply says this. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. I want to show it to you right here. God tells us in 2 Corinthians that he is going to supply us with everything that we need. In other words, God says, I've got enough that I've got enough supply for you and everybody else. Watch this. Now, he who supplies seed. In other words, God is giving us seed to sow. And bread for food will supply and increase the store of your seed and enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way. That's good news. Stop right there. I want you to understand. Many of us want that verse of scripture to stop right there. You will be enriched in every way. How exciting would it be to know that God is going to enrich us in every way? No matter what we do, God is always going to make sure that we have enough. God is always going to keep giving us supply. So we never run low. We never run out. We've always got enough. But here's the thing. God's law in kingdom economics of supply and demand says, I will give you supply. But I make a demand of you. This is what I want you to know. When you're getting the blessings of God, God promises to supply. But God also says, I've got some demands. And here it is. He says, you're going to be enriched so that, in other words, God's blessing is always for a purpose. I want you to know God is not blessing you just for you. God blesses you on purpose and God blesses you for a purpose. Write it down in the comments right now. I'm blessed for a purpose. Yes, my brother. Yes, my sister. You are blessed for a purpose. You are blessed because God has a demand on the blessing he's giving you. Look at what it says. You can be generous on every occasion. 
Here it is. God doesn't want us to be stingy on any occasion. When God says that we can be generous on every occasion, God is simply saying, I will always give you enough so that you can always give out enough. Here's the problem. Too many times in life, we suffer from what I call a blessing backup. Let me stop right there. What does it mean to have a blessing backup? I'm going to tell you. You know, one of the things that I really enjoy is being a homeowner. I enjoy the fact that my wife and I have been blessed with a home, but I grew up in an apartment that had a custodian, that had a superintendent. We had people that we called whenever something went wrong. But now as homeowners, when something goes wrong, either I have to fix it or we gotta go hire somebody to fix it. And this is what I found out. Hiring a plumber can be expensive. How did I find out? Real simple. Well, you know we've got a young child and when you've got a five-year-old boy, amazing things show up in your toilet. That's right, I said it. Amazing things show up in your toilet. One day, Ryan got it in his got it in his little head that he was going to see how many of these little puff balls that we had could fit in the toilet. And I don't know what the answer is, but I know there were enough of them that this weird thing happened when we flushed the toilet. Water started coming and then water had nowhere to go. The level in the bowl started rising. Some of y'all remember De La Soul? It was three feet high and still rising. So we're sitting there and I'm watching this flow up and it hits me in that moment. Sometimes this is how our blessings with God work. We have blocked up the piping so God is still sending supply but it has nowhere to go because we're trying to hold on to it. When Ryan blocked up that pipe, he messed up the planned design of the plumbing. The planned design of the plumbing was that water would come in and water would go out. Too many of us, watch this, because we're worried about supply, we demand that we hang on to all of it just in case. And this is what I want you to understand. When you hang on to all of it, you create a blockage in the blessing flow. That's right. When you create a blockage in the blessing flow, this is what happens. God has more, but God's got to stop pouring because you're still holding. Because, the, because it looked like the bathroom was going to flood, I had to go underneath, turn off the water supply until I could unblock the two until I could unblock the pipe I want somebody in here to understand there are going to be times in life when God is going to turn off your supply because you put a blockage in place selfishness and self-centeredness is a blockage in kingdom economics when we become selfish and self-centered and try to hold on to all of God's blessings for ourselves, we miss that we were designed to be transporters of blessings. We were designed for there to always be a supply that was on, but the only way you get more supply is if you let go of what you've already got. That's why this word tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, simply this, through uh, you can be generous on every on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. I want you to understand the demand that God puts on your supply is that you give it away so that others can be blessed and God can be thanked. Yes, God puts the demand that I will keep supplying but you got to keep giving. And too many times in life, watch this, we feel like if we give, we run out. Now that goes back to last week. Our first law of kingdom economics. Don't have a scarcity mindset. A scarcity mindset makes us believe that it will run out and we won't have enough. So we've got to hold on and hoard everything we've got. But God wants you to know from the beginning, don't have a scarcity mindset because some stuff is just passing through. I want you to know sometimes God is going to use you as the conduit to bless somebody else in the same way that God has used somebody else as a conduit to bless you. Think about times in your life when you've gotten an unexpected blessing. Think about times in your life when somebody has just pushed $5 in your hand. Think about times in your life when you didn't have enough and somebody invited you over to dinner. There are going to be times in life when God is going to bless you unexpectedly by sending someone else to be your blessing. But if God is going to bless you unexpectedly, watch this, Sometimes you're going to have to bless others unexpectedly the same way that God has blessed you. In the kingdom of God, God freely gives supply, 
But he puts a demand on how we are to use it. The issue that most of us have, watch this, we don't like it when people put a demand on our money. Can we be honest? You grown. You go to work every day. You work hard sometimes. And that's your check. Who going to tell me what to do with my check? You can't be making demands on this. I earned this. I should be able to do what I want to with it. I've done this. Here's the problem. Can I give you a flashback? That same job with that same check that you are calling on and demanding to use your own way is the same job with the same check that when you were applying, you said, God, if you'll just bless me. God, if you'll just make a way. Lord, if I can just find favor with the hiring manager. The same job that you were praying for and telling God how you would bless others if God made a way. God made a way and you decided it wasn't God, it was you. How do I know? Because that's human nature and how we've been for a long time. Look at the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 10 through 18. God is talking to the people of Israel after they've come out of, after they've come out of Egyptian slavery and Look what he says. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flock grow large and your silver and gold increase and all, and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt and out of the land of slavery. Look at what God is telling them through Moses right now. When it goes well, don't forget how you got here. Can we be honest? Many of us forget how we got here. Many of us forget we wasn't always the most qualified. We wasn't always the hardest worker. We wasn't always prepared. But somehow God made a way. I'm going to show you how you know. Because there's somebody more qualified than you who should have your job if everything was fair. But you found favor in the sight of God and God gave it to you. So don't forget that God made a way. Don't forget that God brought you through. Too many times when we become satisfied, watch this, we block up the blessing because we start thinking, I did this. We get proud. We get haughty. We start thinking, hey, can't nobody tell me what to do? Look at how I'm living. How you living? Living large. And we start believing that it's all about us. But look what God, but look what the rest of this says. He brought you out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast, dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known to humble and test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may save yourself. My power and my strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. Here it is. God tells him, take a look back at how you got here. Take a look back and remember the long way you came. Take a look back and remember, I led you through the wilderness. I led you through the waterless land. I gave you manna from heaven. I got water out of a rock. Your ancestors had never seen anything like this. It was to humble you so that when you got here, you'd remember how you got here. So that you wouldn't say to yourself, my power and my strength of my hands have produced this for you. Understand something. Don't get brand new when God blesses. God puts a demand on the supply so you don't get brand new. Because many of us, let's just be honest, we get brand new. We get real brand new. Think about it. Think about folks who get their first new car. Uh, you, you can't eat in here. You, you, you can't eat in here. You know, them, them fries, you're going to have to, we're going to put the, we're going to put the food in the trunk because um, I don't want it smelling up my Corinthian leather. You see, you have to understand that, bro, I remember when you had a Corolla that didn't lock. I remember when we wasn't just eating in here. We had food fights in here. Now you done got, remember back in the day, anybody ever been to grandma's house? 
and there was slip covers on all the furniture. Y'all remember plastic slip covers? They stick to you in the summer. They cold in the winter. Because grandma and them said, we got to preserve this because we may never get any more of this. And y'all remember what happened with the slip covers. Eventually they started to cut. They cut you on your leg. You be sitting there like, ah! You, you have to remember that the God that blessed you in the time of little is the God that's brought you to the time of plenty, which is why he needs to remind you where you came from. You wasn't always living like this. You wasn't always balling. You wasn't always an entrepreneur. You wasn't always cash and check. You ain't always set stuff on auto pay. There was a time that it was auto pray when the mortgage was due. So God puts a demand to remind us that the supply comes from him. Because look at it, here it is, how it ends in verse 18. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. In other words, God is saying, when it goes well, because God has always promised the blessing. God has always promised the supply. When it goes well, don't you forget how you got here. Don't you forget who your God is. Because this is the problem. If we forget, we'll make the wrong thing God. Plenty of us have made our jobs God. Plenty of us have made our bank accounts God. Many of us have made our houses God. we made the stuff God. Instead of letting God be God. How do I know? Because your God is what you bow down to. Your God is what you put the most into. And plenty of us put a lot into the car, put a lot into the house, put a lot into the vacation, but put a little into worship, put a little into praise, put a little into lifting up holy hands, put a little into scripture, put a little into prayer, forgetting that it was prayer, praise, scripture, and worship that got you the stuff that you've elevated too high. You've got to keep the right perspective because if you lose perspective, you'll get washed away when the stuff is gone. Here it is. Understand, God's promise of supply is proof of God's love for you. But God's demand on supply is proof that God loves you more than the stuff. And here's the thing. Too many times we'll forget that. But you have to understand, God will go to extreme lengths to bless you. Which is why you have to go to extreme lengths to remember that God has a demand on the blessing. Let me show you how the law of supply and demand works in the kingdom in action. First Kings chapter 17 verses 7 through 16 read as follows. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, go to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I might have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called out to her and bring me a piece of bread. As surely as your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. The jar of flour will not be used up. And the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the words spoken by Elijah. We find Elijah the prophet in a precarious position. Look at what the word says. Sometime later, 
the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. So how does this brook dry up? The brook dries up because in the chapter before, chapter 16, Elijah has pronounced a drought. Now, here's the thing. Ancient Israel, an agrarian society, if you don't have any rain, you eventually are not going to have any food. So God sends Elijah somewhere where he can supply his needs. God sends him to a brook. But here's the thing. The brook is temporary. The brook is a temporary supply, but God comes to him and says, look, there's been no rain. And the word of God tells him, go to Zarephath in Sidon. And there, there will be a widow that there will be a widow that I have directed to supply you with food. Look at him. Look at what's going on. Elijah has run out yet. He still has a demand. He still has a need. He still has something that he needs from God. And God sends him to a small town on the outskirts to a poor widow to supply his need. Let me show you something. Sometimes God is going to do unusual things that don't make any sense to supply our needs. God sends him to this, to this town and immediately Elijah comes upon the widow. He finds the widow. Now here's the thing about the widow. The widow has no supply. The widow has no husband. Her husband has died, thusly why she's a widow. And now widows in that time didn't have welfare. They didn't have social security. All they had was charity. And this is who God sends the prophet to. Let me explain something to you. When God has decided to supply, he will supply from peculiar, strange, and unusual places. He will supply from unexpected, uncharted, and unknown places. But too many times in life, we don't have the faith to move where God tells us to. Elijah had to move in faith, understanding the promise of God. And I need somebody to know right now that when God promises your supply, he never tells you how he's going to work it out. You've got to trust that God is a God of abundance. Trust that God is a God that can supply. And trust that God is a God that will never leave you or forsake you no matter what and then follow his word look at what happens Elijah gets there and finds exactly what God said he would find he finds a widow right at the gate and she's gathering sticks now here's the thing about gathering sticks you gather sticks in those times to create a fire and Elijah asked her can you bring me some water now, she immediately agrees because in those times there was a premium put on hospitality. When there was a stranger at your gate, you didn't build a wall and tell them to go back to the other side. You gave them something so that they could get by and get through. So the widow goes to, make, to get him some water because he's clearly parched and thirsty from his trip. But here's the thing. Elijah makes another demand. He says, also, can you bring me some bread? And that's when the widow, I believe, loses it. Why? Because you know when you're going through, you are typically one thing away from going off. How many times have you been going through and it wasn't a big thing, but you were carrying such a burden. You were dealing with so much that if there was one more thing, it was going to be the straw that broke the camel's back. That if there was one more thing, one more failure, one more setback, one more thing goes wrong. In those times when everything is just running on the ragged edge and you just feel like if anything goes wrong and you walk out and you got a flat tire, everything is running on the ragged edge and you get a call that there's an unexpected bill. Everything is running on and and you're like ready to snap. That's where this widow was. Because Elijah has shown up and it's okay to ask for water. But you don't realize I ain't got no supply. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. God has promised that this woman would have a supply. Look what the Bible says. I'm telling you she snapped because she says as surely as the Lord your God lives. I ain't got no bread. I only got a handful of flour a little bit of olive oil in a jug and I'm getting these sticks so I can make a meal for me and my son and we're going to eat it and die. Think about it. She has said, this is our last meal and you got the nerve to be asking for something that I ain't even got. Think about it. She doesn't realize that God has sent her supply. I want you to understand Oftentimes you can read this from the standpoint of the widow is supplying for Elijah, but Elijah is also supplying for the widow. I want you to know when you move in faith, 
What begins to happen is what God has promised you will overflow to the people around you. When you begin to move in faith, you begin to become an unexpected blessing to others. She believes that she's at the end of the road. Why? Because she's carrying a scarcity mentality. I've just got a little flour. I've just got a little oil. And me and my son are going to eat it and we're going to die. She's overreacting because she's scared of what happens when she runs out. But God has promised a supply that exceeds what you have. And look what Elijah tells her. Don't be scared. It starts right there. When you understand that we have a God of abundance and you understand his law of supply and demand, the first thing that you get to do is stop being scared. I want somebody to know I said it last week. I'm going to say it again. Don't be scared. God's got this. God's going to make a way. God is going to arrange things so that you will be blessed, so that you can be blessed, because God still has more for you and more for you to do. So don't be scared, because when you're scared, you won't think straight and you won't act in faith. Elijah tells him, don't be scared. Go home. Do what you said you're going to do. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me. And then bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. Elijah simply tell him, I understand what you're thinking, but I need you to see what my God can do. I want somebody to understand that when we move in abundance, when we act as if God is able, we begin to let our faith be seen by others so that they can have faith. They begin to see that the God that's taking care of us is the God that can take care of them. But that doesn't happen if we don't move in faith. If Elijah is still at the brook, then the widow doesn't get her blessing. If Elijah is still at the brook, then the widow has come to scarcity and come to the end. But because he moved in faith and shows up at that time. He explains this to the widow and look what the word says. She went on and did as Elijah told her to. I want you to understand in God's laws of supply and demand when God gives supply he demands that you order things properly. Look, what the, look at what the word of God here is. Elijah's not being selfish. He's just saying, if you do what I'm asking you, you'll be following the will of God. And I want some of you to know, when you order your life to follow the will of God, God begins to take care of the rest. But ordering your life to follow the will of God, ordering your life to act in faith, means believing God at his word before you see what God can do. And too many times in life, watch this, we'll do it, but we need proof. I'm going to show you proof. Watch this. Here's your proof. You're still here. Here's your proof. You're still standing. Here's your proof. You've gone through rough times. You've gone through times when you thought you weren't going to make it. You've gone through times when you didn't think you would have enough. You've gone through times when you thought this was your last, this was the end. And yet God brought you out. God brought you through. God found a way to supply everything that you needed. And you are still standing. Right in the comments, I'm still standing. You're still standing because God continued to supply. But because of his supply, he's got to demand. He's got to demand that you order your life right. He's got to demand that you put your priorities straight. He's got to demand that you remember him and put him first and he will take care of the rest. Look what the Bible says. Elijah tells him, look, if you do this, there will be, there will be flour and there will be oil until the Lord sends rain. In other words, God will take care of you in your dry spaces. I want somebody to know right now who's going through a dry space. You're wondering how you're going to make it. God is going to send you supply, but it still comes with the demand. It still comes with you remembering that God sent this so God gets the right to tell you how to use it so that it can bless you and bless somebody else. Look at what happens. Elijah shows up and gets blessed by this woman, but Elijah is the blessing that she needs. She says she went away and did what Elijah told her to do, and there was food every day for Elijah, for the woman, and her family. The jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of God as said by Elijah. I want you to know God's word doesn't come back void. God's word doesn't come back untrue. When God speaks a word, God has already figured out how to make the whole thing work out. So he's going to give the supply, but he's still got a demand. 
God demands that you don't be the blockage to the blessing. God demands that you don't try to hold on to it so tight that you don't bless somebody else. Because remember what the word tells us. I will supply enough for you to be generous on every occasion. This is what you got to know. Once we unblock the toilet at the house and had a good stern talking to with the boy, <clears throat> I turned the supply line back on and the toilet filled right back up. We flushed it to make sure it was still working. It emptied out and it filled right back up. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know, don't be the blockage to the blessing. When it empties out, God has the supply line on and it's going to fill right back up. We know that God will supply, but God also puts a demand that we be a blessing to others while he's blessing us. So don't be scared and don't be stingy. Understand in the kingdom, there's a law of supply and demand. Thank you for joining us. I hope that message was a blessing to you. Maybe that message was such a blessing that it stirred something in you and you want to get a little bit closer to God. Listen, we want you to be in fellowship and relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. If you want to do that, all you got to do is let us know. Go to our website, www.stpauloxithill.org and press the contact us button. Once you press it, just say, I want to be saved or I want prayer. And we will reach right back out to you to pray the prayer of salvation or to pray over your personal needs. We want you to be engaged. We want you to be involved. But most importantly, we want you to have a connection with God through his son, Jesus Christ. Listen, if you enjoyed this, we want to make sure you're a part of the St. Paul family. Like and subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We want you to know everything that's going on. We want you to know every time we put out content and we want to continue to be a blessing to your life. If you want to support our ministry, all you've got to do is go to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org and press the Give tab. You can give your tithe there, you can give your regular offering, or you can make a special gift unto the church. Every dollar counts. Every dollar helps us spread the gospel all around the world, and we'd appreciate your support. It helps more than you know. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And now it's time for the Williams Weekly Challenge. The word of God tells us not only be hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. Right now, I'm in the St. Paul sound booth, and we're readjusting the sound in the church so that when we come back to in-person worship, everything will be just right. For the last few months, everything has been left on autopilot. But what we found is some of the things that were right before aren't right now. Every now and then in life, we're going to have to realign stuff and reset stuff to get the results that we want. This week, my challenge to you, look at the things you've left on autopilot and figure out what do you need to adjust, what do you need to reset, and what do you need to realign so everything is in the order that God would have it so that you can get the results that God wants for you and that you want for your life. My challenge to you, align everything and make it right this week. God bless you. I love you. And we'll see you next time.